Hello, Catherine. Hello, how are you? I'm good. How about you? Yeah, it's very busy here at the moment with all the next year planning, but maybe on your <laughs> side, that's the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also reporting for this year. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lots of work. Are but you yeah. in Wageningen or uh, yeah, any plan I'm to visit? I'm in, I'm in Wageningen. I was planning to be in Bangladesh at this time. However, due to the situation, I thought maybe people are busy otherwise. And then <laughs> I got busy otherwise too. I understand that there's a cyclone coming. Yeah, yeah. Already it started raining this morning. It's already and likely to affect more in the coastal zone. Yeah, and, and it, it will, it's supposed to hit somewhere at Orissa and West Bengal border, right? So, yeah. So, mainly you will get the rain. Okay, I think all people are starting to come in. Yeah, people. Can I try sharing my screen? Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay. Good that we tested it. Yeah, it's working. Are we ex um, Umnat, are you the one from AMD to to welcome us all, or are we expecting also all uh, to join? No, I think that we are expecting someone from uh, AMD to moderate and welcome. Okay. Then we wait a bit. Yeah, we'll wait. I hope Ole will join it uh, or Mi An. Yeah, I understood that Mi An is in a storm situation in the Philippines. Ah, so, okay. So she was not exactly sure if the current would be available. And I understand that our kind of solid anchor point for the Delta Talks. Eisen, he is traveling today. Oh, he's also traveling, okay. So we are missing him. But never mind. Everybody yeah. is almost there. So we wait another two minutes to before we start. Um, G O G G. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, Catherine. Hi, I'm Mo. quickly back to Bangladesh. Yeah, you reached. Yes. It was really great that you could visit the Netherlands. And be in Wageningen. Okay. Yeah. Okay.
Peace. Uh, do you know if Ole will be joining or uh, from AMD management who will be joining moderating? Okay, well, if we if if they are not yet there, uh, whom not? I'm just assuming that as you are there, and as <laughs> all the people who are with us today are already there, let's just start, and then um, may I call upon you, uh, whom not, to kind of assist a bit in the moderating, uh, because I will give the presentation. Um, uh, and then uh, first I want from Wageningen side to welcome everybody to this Delta Talks. Um, and it's a bit uh, a Delta Talks in the real uh, idea how uh, from the Asia Mega Deltas and Wageningen side we started this Delta Talks, that we are sharing uh, what we uh, are working on and even not completely finished because the presentation I will give today is about the learning about our last um, uh, two to six year kind of uh, uh, journey on uh, food systems in deltas. Uh, and it's absolutely not kind of a totally finished product. So we very much kind of uh, look forward to your inputs to that. So that's in a way from my side, the welcoming remark. Humnat, would you like to add something from your side? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, because of this uh, cyclone situation in the Philippines and in uh, other parts of the region, I think when some of the people could not join, especially the, the AMD management team, but uh, I like take the liberty on behalf of the AMD team to welcome everybody to this very interesting and uh, important uh, presentation. I think uh, this is the 15th presentation that uh, AMD and Wakeningen uh, are uh, jointly implementing. And today is a very, very important session, water and food systems in deltas towards the synthesis. And we all know Catherine is very well known in terms of her work uh, in the deltas in Bangladesh, Vietnam, Cambodia. So, um, on behalf of the organizing team, I'd like to welcome everyone to this uh, presentation and we look forward to hear uh, this interesting presentation from Kathleen. Kathleen, over to you and hopefully we'll have more discussion uh, towards the later part. Okay, thank you very much, Homnat, and thank you for this impromptu co-facilitation <laughs> uh, of the session. Uh, now I need to shift to my presentation screen and I need to put it into presentation modus. And I'm just checking with you. Can you see my screen? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, thank you so much. And and Humna, please give me a signal when I'm at 20 minutes. Because okay. if I'm talking too much, that would be a waste of our time. Uh, because I very much like to hear from everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, I'm uh, in this series of the Delta Talks. Uh, today, we got the opportunity to share uh, learnings on our food systems in Delta's research that we worked on in Wageningen. Uh, and I worked on uh, this presentation uh, in particular with Jan Verhagen, Maria Sigmund, and Tossa Harding, but also the whole KB Delta's team um, gave input for the learnings. So this is by no means kind of my work. This is our work and it's by no means finished, uh, but this is a kind of what we came up with. And we are very keen on hearing from you that do you recognize this? Uh, is it similar in your case? Is it different? Uh, and, and then just to kind of learn from each other in that regard. Uh, well, you know about me. Uh, I will tell in this presentation about this food system transition and about our learning. Um, we started in a way uh, in 2019 um, we, we, with uh, the, the, the idea that there's something wrong with food and agriculture, but we were not exactly 
clear on what that then would be. And we thought that a uh, food system may be a very interesting concept then. Uh, and we work in Delta. So the, the water part was always kind of important there. We, we also knew there is a lot of things going right uh, with food and agriculture. We are providing food in the whole world. And despite the fact that there are many people with hunger, there are also many people who have gotten more food or whose nutrition status improved over the last years. And also, though agriculture is less uh, uh, important in uh, some countries in their overall uh, uh, economy, still agriculture is very important in, the, uh, in that it provides a lot of jobs for a lot of people. However, the very much important point is also that uh, we are exceeding the limits. And so uh, these limits, uh, but by now we almost need two planet Earth. Uh, so something has to get changed. And that is in a way then where we are looking at. So we have a not so sustainable food system with overfishing, uh, with that's overuse of sea. We have erosion, overuse of land. There are a lot of hidden costs. FAO has estimated this to be 8 to 27 percent. Uh, we are not eating healthy. Uh, WHO has kind of given information on that, like 1.9 million people are overweight, while 460 million people are underweight. And children below five, there are 52 million kind of uh, low weight for height numbers. Also, food is not always healthy because of adulteration or um, remaining pesticides on food, etc. There are distribution problems. We have problems with food loss and waste. Uh, and so all this together uh, provides uh, the problem. There's a lot of kind of information on that, uh, meanwhile, becoming available. But just in a, a nutshell, what we see is in the discourse is that we shifted in a way from focusing on food production and food production alone uh, to, to combat hunger, to thinking more about food security, uh, noticing that there is also a kind of access and distribution problem. And then in a way now, by thinking more about food systems, we want to kind of think about it in a systematic approach. And meanwhile, we also move in a way towards food system transformation. It's not only about what we have at this moment, but also where are we going? So uh, these points were then uh, what we took in our research, that focus on production alone is not enough. Uh, we need a kind of balanced approach. That's why we want a food system perspective. Uh, there is a need for true pricing. This did not become part of our research. Uh, and we need to deal with kind of uncertainty and complexity. So meanwhile, a lot of information has become available over the last, I, I now say it six years because our research program started in 2019. Uh, this is what IFAD has. Uh, the World Food Forum 2022 was about it. The, the current Food Forum just last week uh, was about it. Uh, there are open access books in the UN Food System Hub about regenerating farming and sustainable diets. This is a recent publication. And also the FAO State of Food and Agriculture uh, 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 prominently features what is happening uh, with food systems. Uh, now, in a way, I kind of zoom a bit out because we started with thinking about the, the linkage also that we are focusing on this SDG zero hunger that we wanted to contribute to. But in particular, for the situation in deltas, we didn't only think about the zero hunger. We also thought about the SDGs, uh, water and climate change and, and the interlinkage between uh, those elements. We took the food system framework as a kind of starting point where the blue boxes are about the food supply system and then the red boxes are kind of socioeconomic drivers uh, like markets, policy, uh, science and technology, etc. And the green boxes are about environmental drivers 
and like climate and water, what I just mentioned, they are in those boxes. And uh, altogether, uh, this is a similar um, visualization of that food system, but then what was in those colored boxes uh, in the earlier one is in the circles in the middle, while this in a way also stresses that there are different goals of a food system. And uh, these are like we want enough food, we want safe and healthy food, food system should kind of provide livelihood, so inclusiveness and equal benefits are important. And as the fourth point, also sustainability and resilience um, are important goals of the food system. And that indeed also brings forward how we want then to balance uh, the different goals. Because if we only increase the food production, which is goal number one, then if it goes at the expense of the environment, what is now often happening, then it's it's in a way not a good uh, move uh, way to move. So um, from there, uh, the food system uh, uh, analysis, this framework gives a kind of momentary picture, and we wanted to then also look at what is changing, um, and then. Uh, if we see, for instance, uh, I'm showing a picture of Dhaka, if like 60 years ago, nobody could have known that it will look like this uh, today. So how then are we going to go about uh, looking forward in a situation where we do not know exactly where we are going and it's highly complex at the same time? So for that, uh, we try to kind of... Um, uh, use the uh, tools for longer term planning uh, and in particular uh, backcasting. Uh, and I want to kind of note that when we started in 2019, this thinking was already used in the water sector because for the Delta Plan in Bangladesh, for instance, they used this kind of thinking. While in uh, at that moment, it was not very common for food system yet. But so this is in a way also uh, in the same time a kind of learning that from one sector we can learn in the other uh, sector on this matter. But basically we want to kind of get to a vision where are we going for the future and then to think about strategies of how to get there. Um, and here this is the, the kind of initial figure that we used that in the vertical axis you have system indicators and in the timeline you see that you then get a kind of change and we are in particular interested kind of where are we going? Is there a vision? Is the, the future situation? Is that kind of resilient? Is it profitable for farmers? As well as that we want to know that in that change process, uh, what kind of innovation is there? What are the opportunities? Who are there? What are barriers? And what are opportunities? Um, uh, so what we now see is that over in the due course of time, uh, actually the thinking about transition also kind of bring us new figures. So currently we are also using figures where we do not only focus on uh, the change from uh, to, to get um, more sustainable in the future, but we also uh, get into the picture that there may be things that will disappear in the in the future. And in that middle part, uh, we are expecting that confusion will also arise because we we do not know exactly what to kind of what will now make it to a sustainable future and what is in a way what we are facing out because there are many different. Um, factors at the same time kind of ongoing. Uh, but this is in a way what we are looking at then. Uh, in our uh, research, uh, what we then tried was to make for that process also um, a kind of guideline how we then uh, in deltas with stakeholders uh, can uh, analyze uh, the situation together, try to understand what is going on, using food system mapping uh, in that regard, and then uh, see how we can prioritize and develop pathways uh, for uh, transition. Um, uh, this can then be followed with 
strategic actions and implementation. And while at the, uh, in, uh, at, the, at every moment in that process, also you wish to kind of monitor, adapt, and learn. Now, in some of the activities we undertook in the case studies, we 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 did kind of walk alongside with others who were in this process. And we also kind of learn certain things about what then happens um, with us as researchers. Uh, so that's in a way uh, how we come to where we are today. Um, and this picture I find uh, always very bit kind of uh, funny because it very clearly shows uh, how you can think uh, about the future, that if we think in a delta, that because the city is increasing and because people have more money in the city, uh, there could be a um, market for more, more milk. And thus, uh, should we then advise farmer to have more cattle or more goats? Um, if that is in a situation where at the same time a salinity intrusion is happening uh, and also uh, we are not sure yet uh, if there will be fodder for those cattle, these are then all kind of ingredients on uh, um, that we would like to discuss it with stakeholders, how to think about a pathway towards the future. Uh, but I'm not kind of going into too much detail on the um, uh, these elements, like how with livestock researchers, they focus then on the livestock element or how the salinity people also kind of try to figure out the future situation on salinity. I'm now kind of reflecting in particular on what then happened in our research process. So um, we organized for this also a session in our team. Uh, and uh, these are then elements uh, that we thought we want to uh, kind of think about. So one is about the complexity and the uncertainty. And how what what happened with us and what could we what we, what what are our insights contextualization and the adaptive ap approach the collaboration with local partners the project team dynamics and also uh, reflexive learning uh, and i'm i'm kind of trying to link it a bit to this guidelines um, and what we kind of one of the main points we we found is that uh, it's very difficult to delineate a food system and basically there is no the food system there is no the uh, transition of the food system and some people talk about transition some people talk about transformation there are also kind of different uh, thinkings kind of coming in there and also for different stakeholders, there is a different interest there. Um, so the, 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 the observation we have that is that uh, we always kind of miss parts of the puzzle. And uh, does this then, uh, because researchers always like to have a kind of clear idea on what they are working on. And what we observed is that sometime uh, we also need to say that we do not know or we do not cover part of the puzzle. Uh, and in general, we experienced this as, as it, that it was helpful to share this uh, and that that helped us also to navigate this complexity and uncertainty. Uh, that we do not know everything and we are not researching everything, but we did start at some part. And we also found that uh, as researchers, uh, we basically start at wishing to get overview and uh, wishing to understand. Uh, while in a way for other stakeholders, they may already have gone through some part of that process and they may be in other stages um, at the same time. Um, we also found that we do think the local context is essential um, uh, in order to kind of develop knowledge that will be relevant, that, that you do not kind of um, get hanging into uh, academic discussion um, on 
uh, which line to follow, uh, etc. And also, in a way, to keep focus on uh, what is it, what we want to contribute to, and what we want to work on. We found that uh, the the field level visits with other stakeholders are very important tool in that regard, not only to understand uh, the local context, but also in the collaboration. In our research, we uh, the the specific goal of our research was to also contribute uh, in methodological development, and we found that we need to balance this point uh, with the earlier point about the local context, because in how far do you raise expectation in the local context about um, the the situation? That are you going to answer questions of local people and kind of assist there, or at some stage is it also your priority to ensure that um, you kind of carry it, um, you reflect on what what your research contributes at a higher level in more methodological terms, or in terms that it is also useful to other stakeholders in other specific uh, settings. In the involvement of stakeholders, and I come also back to that in another point, this is also a kind of balancing um, a point that how much can you provide and what can you not uh, provide. Our key point about uh, collaboration with local partners is that trust is important, um, which in a way, uh, uh, yeah, it, it sounds very easy and at the same time it's very difficult. Uh, equal partnership is an uh, important point, but it can have different meanings. Because does equal partnership mean I do my part from the research program that I am in and you can do your part from a research program that you are in and we agree to uh, share with each other? Or does equal partnership also mean kind of that... Um, uh, you have an equal budget to mine, and that so, so there you need clarifications and you need um, time to um, make it clear what you can and can't do in the specific setting that you work in. And that also can lead to the, the fact that some collaborations become more intensive and some collaborations are also scaled down. Uh, in the collaboration, the the network and the relationship building is, is a kind of longer term assignment, often beyond the project boundary. The work in Bangladesh that we could do was not only because we had this research program, <clears throat> but also because we had already a long standing collaboration with many people uh, in Bangladesh. And um, these are then also important. Uh, in thinking about how you can do research that um, uh, to start off from scratch and may be very difficult if you have a short span uh, research program. And then you can kind of wonder whether you, whether you can really contribute to solutions or whether that shouldn't from the beginning in a way be a promise. Um, in the collaboration, it's important to regularly revisit the project definition. <clears throat> and it doesn't mean that you have to stick to the project definition, but it, it means that you realize that uh, all partners can have changing uh, goals while going, and that, that it may mean that you wish to kind of redefine uh, the project also based on the changed uh, interest of the different partners. Open dialogue, shared experiences, and respect for different perspectives. I, I, I think I'm not telling you new things. I see it a lot in the uh, Asia Mega Deltas program as well, that you pay a lot, uh, uh, emphasize these elements a lot. Project team dynamics. Uh, we found that uh, creating a common language is a very important part and as such this food system framework gave us the opportunity to work together with economists and plant scientists and livestock uh, people with environmental uh, uh, scientists 
in um, in case studies on food system transition. Um, and it took time for us to get there. And we um, particularly also in kind of invested time by talking to each other. I think we kind of focused more on how we get the researchers in one frame than that we spend time with getting different stakeholders in one frame. Uh, but again, these are things that um, need balancing. Valuing diversity, we found it important. Um, the format, how do we work? Uh, it helped us to kind of work with startup meetings on the beginning of the year, have documents uh, at a common place, have a kind of format for progress meetings. These were kind of practical things uh, that helped us to work together. Um, and in that uh, working together, we consider working together within uh, Wageningen UR, where, for instance, and that if people change, how do we get new uh, or young colleagues quickly on board and part of the team? Uh, and we also uh, find that how we are working together with other people worldwide is part of um, this project team uh, dynamics. Uh, reflexive learning, kind of how do we learn while we go? Um, we, we, we realize that it start, takes time to study food system transition. Um, that sounds like an open door, but six years ago, we didn't even know yet how, to th how we could study food system transition. So in a way, we have now kind of gotten tools how we can... Uh, study that, and that it, it's um, the the uh, the the amount of time you have also depends on what the goal of the study can be, and that you need to balance that. And as researchers, what kind of role can we then have? Uh, are we uh, contributing to kind of engineer uh, the food system transition in a particular case? Are we kind of merely observing? Uh, food system transition are also kind of facilitating and um, how do we then go about uh, these roles? We are aware that we have a bias as researchers. We are often kind of thinking about knowledge while other stakeholders may have other priorities. Uh, and we also are aware that we have limitations. Uh, for instance, if I'm a researcher in Wageningen, I cannot study all the uh, dynamics of a situation in Bangladesh, also simply because I'm not there at, uh, at, at the site. Um, the solutions uh, proposed, um, that also is an important uh, part for me of reflection, is that by finding out more about food system transition, we are kind of immediately wishing to understand it better, but that does not automatically bring us to also finding solutions uh, for the direction or for the steps in uh, the food system uh, transition. So in a way, I need to kind of wrap up a bit, otherwise I don't give you time to talk. But basically we find in food system in Delta as different changes are happening at the same time food habit change, climate change, income change, and, and, and how we can bring this together in this food system uh, transition. That's what we then looked at. Uh, water, which is so important in a food system in Delta, it's part of the system. Um, and at the same time, it's a kind of system in itself. And why I'm saying this, that if water in a food system is only kind of too much, too little, too dirty, then that does not explain enough what is happening. Uh, water also uh, has a, a kind of system characteristics in the sense that, and that it has rules and regulation, it has administration and uh, institutions. And from a food system perspective, we do not automatically look at the system perspective of water. So that's an important part there. We do feel kind of that we need to address 
all things at the same time. Then this is the complexity element, while not knowing the future, uncertainty, while balancing different goals. So we are very aware that there are no simple solutions. And I think by kind of um, thinking through what I just explained to you, the steps uh, in this process, I do think the, the methodological steps help us to get it more clear. Uh, and then in a way, we we may not be the ones who make the solutions, um, but we do play a role in finding solutions uh, in the food systems. These solutions then also kind of need to be kind of integrated and yeah? global, national, local level for different levels, but also integrated for different sectors and integrated kind of now and in the future. We need for that involvement of stakeholders. We need kind of information about that future and how do we make it as uh, accessible for stakeholders. And we need also the kind of true pricing information because that's very much what is actually the price of our food, also taking into account uh, that we don't want to ruin the environment. We did not focus on that, but that's definitely also part of uh, what you would wish to look into. Some of the results, we put it in the um, uh, storyline, uh, uh, Food in Deltas. Uh, this is available with some uh, small videos and background stories uh, of our insights. Uh, and uh, currently we are uh, creating an output on uh, the different subject matter topics, uh, what kind of solutions we then came up, for instance, on salinity hotspots, but also uh, with regard to the food safety framework that we were working on in crops. Uh, you remember the quinoa presentation of Robert. So these points we are bringing together, as well as that we are working on a special issue with the International Journal on Water Governance uh, on food systems in deltas. And also uh, some of the researchers in Asia Mega Deltas have already contributed with papers or are at the moment kind of finishing off uh, the last bit of papers. So this is what I wanted to share. Uh, please, um, the floor is open for your comments and suggestions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Catherine, for this very interesting presentation and also a lot of uh, food for thoughts, especially uh, what are the challenges in the global food systems in uh, deltas and how the 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 Wakeningen is developing the research framework and then the special research methodology or the research process that you have been adopting to localize the food system sustainable food system solutions uh, for different deltas so uh, and then uh, emphasizing on we need to balance sustainability, food security, resilience, and all those uh, resource use. So this is very the interesting presentation. Uh, I'm sure we have uh, some questions or the experience sharing from different deltas. I guess you highlight mostly in the Bangladesh uh, example. I'm sure there are a lot of examples in Vietnam, Cambodia. So hopefully we'll have some uh, experience or sharing or some suggestions from the participants. So uh, floor is open. Anybody wants to comment? Yeah, Keys. Uh, Keys. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes, sorry, I was just unmuting. Um, I was listening with half a ear, so I hope that I I didn't miss anything. <laughs> but I was quite interested in the um, yeah, looking at at the, the whole system and what kind of transition pathways there are. And I think, yeah, one of the always the challenges is to what extent can you actually 
you know, this idea of control. Uh, of course, um, if you look at specific regions, I think also like uh, the Mekong River Delta in Vietnam, there is a kind of a regional approach and there's a kind of an idea of which direction to go and different pathways. So it is possible uh, probably, you know, with, with multiple actors to, to sit around the table and develop like a kind of a master plan in what direction uh, to go. Um, my only, from a researcher perspective, it, it's maybe easier, interesting, I think, in the sense that you can follow that and you can document it and you can see, okay, what kind of lessons can you draw on this process? Uh, but if you want to have influence as a researcher uh, community or like from a CGR perspective, I sometimes have my doubts in terms of what influence we have, because there's so different type of actors involved and having different political interests and, and suddenly there may be a disaster and that the whole mood swings again and it moves into a different uh, uh, direction or there's suddenly money coming available through the World Bank and, and you know, everyone is jumping on it or some, something else. So, yeah, I, um, I think on a small scale, I know that Wageningen also, I think even in the uh, 90s, 80s, uh, of the, uh, already 20, 30 years ago, there were actually quite nice experiments and looking at transition pathways and looking at a smaller scale and how to work with different uh, stakeholders working on sustainable pathways and how to do that from a um, system perspective. But at the larger scale um, and, and the, yeah, I think it's very complicated, like what you say, and very difficult. And yeah, you can we can raise a lot of questions, but to what extent, um, yeah, what what role, what influence can we have on that? Um, yeah, it puzzles me in a way because I think we all, I think we agree on the overall approach, and it, yes, we need to get everyone on, this, on, on the, in a way. How can we develop those pathways? And um, but then it's very difficult, I think, to to make that happen at a large scale over a longer time frame. Um, yeah, so just some thoughts. I'm, so I'm, I'm I'm interested actually to get your presentation and look a little bit more in detail. I'm, I'm quite interested in this type of work. I, I, I just realized how incredibly complicated it is. And um, yeah, how can you one? Yeah, how can you manage this in, in, in a way? And of course, that's the all the question we all ask ourselves. But yeah, just yeah, some thank you. Thank feedback you. for me. Uh, yeah. Catherine, uh, you want to answer or we have two more questions we'll take and then. Uh... Uh, I um, well, I, 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 I'm very happy with your remark is because um, uh, you, you are kind of reflecting uh, what, what I'm also uh, saying. So so um, and I think that six years ago we couldn't say this. Do you also agree on that? Um, I think I would have said that six years ago. So, uh, oh, oh, okay. so I, um, because I think it's not a new experience. I think we we got this experience. I think already over a longer time frame. I think this idea that we can control these processes is it's. Uh, I know, like the, what was this book already from Niels Reuling? I think like twenty thirty years ago. Uh, I'm not sure whether it was from Niels or whether it was some case later. Was about. Uh, a wheelbarrow full of frogs, you know, how do you get all these um, yes. um, uh, fr frogs into the wheelbarrow and how do we keep them in and how do we move to a to, to a certain direction? So, yeah, it's very challenging. And I think with it, especially if it comes to scale, if it comes to um, a longer time frame, the, the, the different political interests would play a role, um, especially if there's money becoming involved, uh, then it's probably also the private sector who starts to get the key role. So yeah, one thing what I wanted to say, like if we could get like, of course, uh, aligned with government partners and they play a leading role in, in developing and shaping this process, that's probably the best way that we could have some influence um, on that. But there's many other actors who play a yeah. key role in this. And I, I fully agree that that uh, I do not think I could control a food system transformation. However, I do find that uh, uh, from private sector side, but also from government side, people are looking for information. And the information they are looking for is both uh, in a way kind of um, that what should I do? Uh, and then uh, if ocean steamer uh, make a slight change now, you might not even see it. 
that it is changing, but over the years that may make a, a, a lot of difference. And should I then go a bit left or a bit right? So, so those kind of questions, I do think um, knowledge can help to, to think through what could be happening and what could then be the questions coming up. I, I do not have the, 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 the idea that we can fully kind of engineer uh, that because also the observations you make that any disaster or any strong influence from private sector may make or a political shift may make kind of the, the, the interests of other stakeholders who are far more important sometimes than the, the researchers in giving the direction uh, of the transformation. Um, uh, and and uh, what, what I like about the, the thinking in food system transition is also that it give a way to discuss with stakeholders that what do you see then for the future and which questions are you then getting so that we do not only do research on a current problem. Uh, for instance, uh, my cattle, uh, uh, what food should I give my cattle to get more milk? But that I also can have different type of questions towards the future if I take that future uh, into account. And that is what this framework helps me to do. Yeah, I think control is not a good word. So I think yeah, maybe it's more that we look at the high quality process. So if it does transition, uh, how can we improve the quality of that process? But then again, yeah. uh, who are we? Uh, how are yeah. we able to get? Um, yeah, why would those who are in the lead of these processes, uh, you know, they may have their own dynamics in terms yeah. of what they sure. what they consider yeah. a high quality process, and we may not always recognize that that uh, of course from an information point of view, I think uh, especially from the academic side, I think we're often very good to indicate like okay what information needs etc. But of course there are political processes going on, and then sometimes the dynamics uh, requ yeah it requires a different different type of dynamics to ensure a high quality process. So it's interesting to look at those different angles. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, Humnat, your 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 microphone is off, but I think you want to give oh, Salah the, the, the microphone to give his question, right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. It's very interesting, Catherine. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe could could have a better idea about the project if I would read something about it. Uh, you, you talked about a lot uh, about we. We means the project team. I understand, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So it from the point of view of different countries, different deltas, how this we group are integrated, like. If it is not the major, you know, stakeholders involved in this, uh, I, I'm talking about from the point of view of ownership of the research, uh, whether they're part of the research or part of, even part of the, you know, uh, taking the research outcomes on a regular basis and then integrating into the, into the policies. Uh, do we have that kind of, you know, uh, practical relationships so that we have a, you know, entry point into that kind of discussions and then it's becoming integrated into the policies in respective Delta countries. Uh, and then the other thing is that we have different stages of development of different deltas, right? Uh, maybe in uh, South South Asia will have different developmental phase, and then if you talk about Netherlands, it's a totally different one, and maybe Southeast Asia could be totally a little uh, or more different than South Asia. So from the socioeconomic, um, you know, stages point of view, it could also be uh, the question of compatibility between different deltas. Uh, if we consider other elements like cultural elements or political elements into it. So all those different things that maybe just may not be right questions to ask, but 
just to think about, yeah. yeah thank you very much, Alodini, because I think all the points you raised, uh, first, the one about the we, kind of who is the we, uh, the, the point about ownership, uh, the point about how, uh, how then uh, you kind of integrate the research or the results of the research in policies, all are kind of very much relevant uh, points. Uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm not saying we did the best possible job um, because, for instance, um, in some cases, we, we try to work together with uh, a local organization and then the collaboration become uh, less intensive over the time. Well, that's that's then immediately linking to what you are saying. Uh, and also the reflection I want to give is that um, the yes, it's important that uh, the we is sufficiently uh, diverse. Um, there, the, the ownership of the research also could be at different levels with different owners, that there could be international level owners, there could be uh, national level owners, and national could be in different countries, and there could be kind of even more local level owners. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I'm not exactly uh, sure, uh, I don't think with our research, we changed the, the, the policies in Bangladesh, for instance. I don't think so. Um, and also, I cannot kind of point out one is to one how we internationally uh, change policies. Um, but one thing I do know is like last week, there was the World Food Forum in Rome and uh, Ukraine deputy minister was in Rome with a delegation at IFAD because they want to become a member and it's about food system transformation. They organized a forum. Then they invited us to talk there. So our knowledge does get somewhere. Um, but again, you are fully right to reflect on uh, what kind of cultural elements, uh, what kind of socioeconomic compatibility is there when you uh, talk and, and uh, yeah, in 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 some cases you you know it at the beginning of the research. In some cases you reflect on it during the research, and we are now kind of at the end of the research reflecting on it. So thank you very much for bringing up these points. I just raised this because this uh, you are having this research for a long time, and then it, it's it's right. It's not look like a typical project, right? is a little uh, longitudinal kind of approaches. So it, it would actually helpful if we have a you know, kind of national partnership and commitment, then you could continuously give a good set of inputs into the national system. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think so too. That's a learning, yeah. right? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Salahuddin. Now over to Paul. Hi, folks. Thanks very much, Catherine. That was interesting. Um, would you you'll be able to make that talk available? Is that right? The, I mean, the PowerPoint. Yes. Thing? Great. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah I, um, I will. I already. I send it to Eisen just for your information, and uh, so we can ask Eisen to circulate to everybody on the call as well as that uh, the recording is going on. So it will also be like the earlier Delta Talks uh, available to see back. All right, thanks. Um, just, uh, I think that uh, Keith really said a lot of what I wanted to say. Um, I think something I've been working with, with a bit with the Bangladeshi groups that I'm working with and then in Vietnam is sort of looking at autonomous transformation versus planned transformation. and. From my experience, not when I'm not involved with projects and when I'm traveling around these areas with friends and talking to uncles and aunts and farmers, uh, you're hearing what's going on and there's a lot of autonomous, the, the people are changing, you know, and I always feel like that the researchers and government policies 
five or ten years behind and we, we're sort of catching up with what they're doing and and so on so there's a lot of that going on and i think sort of harnessing that change a bit more um is probably a good thing so i think yeah we're all, all catching up i mean you know there was feminist studies sort of came in the 70s and, and we were oh gender gender and you go yeah well it's been around for a while um, this sort of participatory approach has been around maybe since the 70s or 80s and we're sort of going wow we this is a big kind of new thing and uh, we're sort of very slow to come up with common sense a lot of the time. Um, a lot of the money kind of goes to, and a little bit on that autonomous sort of change, a lot of the money goes to researchers, projects that I mean, big, big amounts of money are going to airline companies and hotels, including five-star hotels and gin and tonics, and not really to the, the end user, the farmers and the people that might be setting up small, you know, micro SMEs and things like that. So, I think that's a real shame of, of the whole kind of um, this process. It kind of gets, it's very, a lot of transaction costs to, to get these results done in the context of where there's already autonomous change and farmers are doing it for themselves. And how can we support that rather than sort of imposing ideas and stuff? So I think that's it's a bit of a, an issue as well. And I think Keith sort of raised that. And I think even Ahmad sort of touched on that, like the question about who's we really, I, um, you know, always you need to be thinking, who's this for? You know, who are we doing this for, and and what are we what are we doing? Um, so all that sort of stuff. And then, and and I suppose one of the a lot of these big names, these sort of big multilateral organisations. And I wonder if, what I'm seeing is a failure of. Um, so we had COP the the last thing in Paris, I think it was, and there was the agreements. They're not working. They're not working. The world's not stopping carbon emissions. Um, so the government's not playing the game. They're not. They're not really honest. Um, and so, and that's that's just for carbon, which is going to be a real problem. But even when we talk about some of the structures and the organisations that are meant to be helping farmers or rural communities adapt, they're their government agencies, and how complicit or how tied in are they with um, kind of maintaining status quo while looking looking like they're making changes and ticking the gender box and ticking the development box. But I, I don't know. So I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a massive challenge. And I, so for me, my, my, the way I try to address all of that is just simply building relationships, building personal relationships and doing what we can on the ground and trying to be um, realistic and listening, a lot of listening, a lot of talking and listening, I suppose, to in, in the local. So but I think there was some good things in your talk that I want to I want to steal and paraphrase and about the design process. But in the end, you've got to go and talk to these people and say, what do you need? What do you want to do? And what 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 are your pathways? How do you see them? How can we help you? Our job is to be facilitators, not not lecturers, I suppose. Anyway, that's my lecture. Thank you for sharing that. And and, and I, I think this is very important reflection what you give yeah, it's about kind of zooming out to the bigger picture uh how, how do and uh, that what you refer to as a messy messy challenge uh yeah. and and this kind of build building personal relationships and doing what we can um yeah and and so i i think the challenge is to kind of get from the individual personal level because one person alone cannot think even to make the change but at the same time if one person does not start it's in a way the kind of drop in the ocean type of discussion um, and and what i find is that i work in an organization that uh, is is uh, working at the local level at the national level at the international level so how do these people in those organizations then kind of link the levels uh, and, and are we uh, reflecting on whether we really contribute to change? And I, I, I feel very <laughs> humble in that regard that I, I cannot really claim that, that we did that with that research. And at the same time, uh, it, 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 it's... It, it, it's I do think we 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 kind of made steps that were that are relevant. But so thank you for reflecting in this wider context and let's keep looking how we kind of can mm. 
uh, work with each other to to do a better job. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. I think we are uh, almost at the end of the uh, time. So, uh, on behalf of this organizing team in AMD, and then uh, working in uh, the the organizing team of this uh, Delta talk. Uh, we would like to thank uh, Catherine for this very interesting uh, talk and uh, sharing your experience, how the food system transformation is going to happen in the future and then what, what process is needed. So this is very, very informative and useful talk for us. We learn, I'm sure everybody benefited from this talk. So thank you so much uh, for your uh, presentation, very important presentation. And for all the participants, thank you for your participation and uh, sharing your questions. Uh, I think uh, we'll uh, share this presentation with everybody so that uh, if you have, uh, uh, if you want to know more, then you can uh, read the presentation. And if you want more further detailed information, you can directly contact to Kathleen as well. So thank you so much for everybody, and they have a have a good uh, time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Omnat, for the instantaneous support. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Very nice uh, talk. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.